In this tutorial, you'll learn how to add bleed to your cards. Would you like some bleed? <laughs> bleed! So what is bleed exactly? Bleed is when the art of your card actually extends past your card, so past the borders of the card in all directions, and gives you a margin for error so that when the card is cut, there are no white edges. Let me show you what I mean with this demonstration over here. On the left, we have a card with no bleed. That's just my regular card design. Over here, I have the same card and you can see the red markers here, the red lines are where the card would be cut. But now I have this extra art. So this green bit here that extends beyond the card borders. And this is called the bleed zone or the bleed area or just bleed. Bleed anyway. Well, let me show you why. Imagine that you send this card to the printer, a whole bunch of cards, and they cut them out for you, but they cut them just the tiniest bit wrong. So imagine here I'm the printer and I'm coming along and I'm cutting this out, but I, I'm just a tiny bit off like that. If I print it like that, when you put that card on your table, it's going to look like this. And as you can see, there's this ugly white edge, which really looks atrocious, doesn't it? Now let's see what that would look like if I had made that bad cut on a card that had been set up with bleed. So I'll go back here. I'll just move those red lines to the back there. I'm going to make the same bad cut and it's going to be off a bit. It's going to be like this. It's actually a worse cut here, if, if you like, just to show you a worse cut. But if we put this card on the table, it's the same size, but you'll see that it looks a whole lot better because it doesn't have that white edge. What would happen if the cut was off in the other direction, however? Well, let's test that and see. So I'm going to make the same cut, except this time, instead of cutting it down accidentally, I'm gonna cut it up a bit. So I'm gonna cut it like this. Putting this card on the table here, you'll see that although it still looks better than this card, there's something a bit off here. This banner, which is meant to be overlapping with the edge of the card here, it's meant to be touching the edge. It's actually in by a bit. So that means we need to do something to this layout to prepare it for this bleed. We need to prepare for this kind of bad cut. How would we do that? So I'm here in Dextrous in a project and I've got these two cards ready to print, but they haven't been prepared for bleed. So I need to head to the layout editor. So I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna set them up with bleed in mind. Now, if I go down to the bottom here where it says bleed and safe area, if I open that up, I am gonna preview this and I'm just gonna dial up the bleed a little bit and have a look at what is happening here. As I um, turn up this bleed number, you can see that this green area is getting bigger. This is great default behavior, but just so you know, it only happens like this if you have a border on the base zone here. So this um, card background zone, it has a border of 10. Um, so when I hit bleed, when I dial up or down the bleed, Dextrous goes, oh, you've got a you've got a border on there, hang tight, we'll extend that for you into the bleed area to make your life easier, which is really nice. But note that if you don't have a border on this base zone, so if I turn off this border entirely, so if it's got no border, and now if I go back here and I preview again, and I have set the bleed to three, then it actually just extends the whole of the base zone out into the bleed area, which again is what you want, but you can see here, it's essentially, it's making that background image bigger. So if you have a border on the base zone, the border will get bigger. If you don't have a border, we'll extend the whole base zone. So any color or artwork will essentially be stretched to fill whatever bleed you give the card. Note that your other zones don't change position. So if you have any zones that are touching the edge like this one, you're actually going to need to modify them to account for bleed, to account for a bad cut. This scroll zone down here, because it's um, so centered on the card, I'm not gonna need to modify it, but this top banner zone here, I want it to touch the edge of the card no matter how the cut is. So for example, Imagine that the printer came along and it cut the card like that. I don't want the gap up the top. So what I'll actually need to do is to just select this banner, for example, I'm going to extend it up to the top and that might actually involve me moving some icons here. So yeah, I'm just gonna move this down a little bit. 
I'm going to move this down a little bit. I'm going to move this down a little bit. So now you can see, I'm just going to center this a bit more. If I do get a bad cut now, like that, then the banner is still right up the top and touching the edge of the card. As another example here, imagine instead of this scroll, if I had a background color on this ability text here, and say if I wanted it to fill the bottom of the card without bleed, if I turn off this preview, it's just going to look like that. And if you have your card set up like this, so it's just to the edge of the card, then when you turn bleed on, you can see that actually there's this outline here. So to prepare this card for bleed, you just need to make sure that this zone, if you want it touching the edge, actually does extend all the way to the edge of the bleed zone. Another thing to be aware of is that you don't want any important icons too close to the edge. So this is with bleed on right now, but if I take bleed off, you can see that these two things, important icons, are actually too close to the edge. If I do the print cut simulation again, like so, you can see that even if we're just a little bit off, we're actually cutting into that icon. So just to show you how this would look even with bleed, so if I'm previewing in the bleed here and I do the print cut simulation, if we cut down like this, bleed is actually saving us there on the, on the bottom left edge, but you can see we're actually kind of encroaching on that icon there. So one helpful tool for this is what's called a safe area. So the safe area shows you the, out, the outline of where the card should be cut. But if you turn that up to two or three mils, you'll see that if the cut is out, by a little bit. So for example, if we cut like there, for example, bleed has still covered us in that we've got a proper card cut, but our icons are still getting cut off. So it's a good idea to just turn the safe area up to two or three and just make sure that any icons that are really important are just brought down into the card. That way, if the cut is atrocious, you know that your important information is safe. Now you might be wondering how much bleed should I actually set? I know that we've been working with three mils of bleed here, but is that the correct amount for my printer? Well, I've got good and bad news for you. The bad news is it actually depends on the printer you're going to use. And while most printers say three mils of bleed, they actually want you to deliver them a PNG card image at a specific pixel size. And all the printers round that size slightly differently. So for example, if we head over here to the Game Crafter, you'll see that they're after an image or a PNG or a JPEG that is exactly 825 by 1125 pixels. Whereas Make Playing Cards, they are after one that is 822 by 1122. Launch Tabletop is after one that is 820 by 1120. So you can see there is actually some variation there to do with rounding and everybody's wanting a slightly different pixel size. The good news is that over in Dextrous, we've made a way to calculate the exact dimensions really easily. So for example, let's say I was going with the Game Crafter and I really want it to be, what was it, 1125 high by 825, 825. So that will give me um, a PNG. If I export it at 300 DPI, it will give me a PNG that is exactly those dimensions, which is perfect for the game crafter. So what you need to do, whoever your printer is, you just need to look at, okay, what's the pixel dimensions of the card that they want from you? And then you plug those dimensions in here, the desired height and the desired width. Then you note down this number, because I'm going to need that later. So I'm going to, if I'm going to be printing with the game crafter, I'm going to copy that, copy that bleed. If I need to make any adjustments to my card here in the layout editor, I'll do that now so that I know it's good to go. Then I can head back to the component editor. So these cards are ready to export. I would hit export, export this component. Now here's the step that everybody misses. You have to apply the bleed here as well, because often you want to print this at home and you don't actually want bleed or you want to export to a different platform. But if you want to export to the game crafter, you need to apply that magic number of bleed. So you go to page setup here, go to bleed, and we're just going to punch in that number that we saved. Now that will give us the exact correct amount of bleed that we need for the game crafter. So then you hit export, generate images. I want images at 300 DPI because that's going to be the exact right size. I'm going to export that. 
Extract the zip folder that you download from Dextrous and then open it up and you'll be able to see these images here inside. Now, if you mouse over them there, you can actually see they are PNGs and they are the exact correct dimensions for the Game Crafter. If you get your PNGs and they are like significantly smaller um, dimensions, like maybe 750 by 1050, you've almost certainly forgotten to apply the bleed at this step here. Bleed! So if you are printing with the Game Crafter or launch tabletop or make playing cards, we've got a tutorial on how to export for each of them. So how to take these, these PNGs here with bleed and how to go through their printing process. But now you know what bleed is, how to set it up for your layout, and how to export PNGs with bleed for different printers. Go bleed them cards! I just wanted to mention two extra notes here to do with bleed and the basic setup of a card. One principle I've come to realize is that thin borders are just always bad. And let me show you why. So say if I'm going to do this demo again, these borders are significantly thinner than my first example up here, nice and thick borders. These are thin, and let me just show you how bad the card can look. So if I click here, again, if I'm off just slightly, even the slightest amount, if I put this on a table, you get those red, uh, the, sorry, the white lines, the white edges again. And the problem is if the borders are quite thin, even with bleed, a bad card will still look bad. So let's say I do that card again, close to the edge. Because the border is so thin, it gives us such little margin for error. So even bleed, even though it does look better than no bleed, the thin borders are really killing us here. So we, this card just looks pretty bad. Whereas if I compare that to the cut up here, even though this cut is probably worse, because the border was thicker overall, it looks better. A bit more forgiving, if you like to think of it that way. And that leads me to my second observation, which is simply that a borderless card design is actually the best of all. It's the most flexible, it's the most forgiving. So you can see here, here's my normal card. Here's the card again, but with borderless bleed. Um, now, nothing's gonna save you from a bad card if you don't have bleed. So just to demonstrate that once more really quickly, I make my bad cut. If the cut is bad, you get these white edges no matter what, right? So here it is, I've got my white edges, but if the cut is bad, on a borderless design, this is kind of cool. Still make the card quite bad. Like that's, that's yeah, that's pretty off. Probably my most off card. And it's pretty good, really. I'm not, my eye isn't drawing attention to two different things. Like, like up here, you can see I'm, my eye is immediately drawn to this razor thin border and this thicker one, and it just is really jarring. Whereas the borderless design is by far the most forgiving. So yeah, hope you found that interesting. Hope you learned a bit about bleed, why it's useful, why it's necessary for printers and how to set it up in Dextrous. I didn't even get any of my pants this time. What a Christmas miracle. Hannah, can you take my headphones off? <laughs>